Hello, welcome to the Great Cow Basic uh, Training Sessions. This is an overview of uh, what's been covered in uh, the 21 session uh, videos. So um, what I've got is, I'm not, there's no technology in here. This is just an explanation of um, what we're going to be going through in the 21 sessions and uh, the code, etc. Okay, let's get um, into it. So we cover 21 um, different subjects. Um, they're all there in grey. I put them in grey for a particular reason because we're going to peel those back and have a look at them in a different way in a moment. But essentially we start off with um, taking a microcontroller, building a little board up, and then making it an LED flash right the way through to some very complex subjects. But let's have a look at it a different way, and then you can sort of walk through the sessions at your own pace, and you can choose your own route. So then 1 to 21, but the route you go through them is your own choice. Now, um, let's just recap why you're looking at the Great Car Basic compiler. Let's not get caught up in the name. Let's put the name somewhere else. It's a utility, it's a command line utility that's got a, a set of capabilities around it in terms of user interfaces and IDE, etc. But it will generate a very valid machine code and uh, object files for about a thousand uh, microcontrollers from microchip. That's PIC and AVR. I'm only going to show you, I only show a PIC, but it could be any of the range and any of the AVRs. So what is the, the compiler? It's, um, it's a tool chain. So we have the, the, basic, the basic compiler, which takes your source codes in terms of the high level language. Um, just put a pointer on here. It takes your source code. It takes a series of libraries, brings those together and pre-processes them. As it walks through, it translates your code and those libraries into a machine code internal to the compiler. It creates microchip or microchip uh, assembler as an output file, which you can learn from and look at. We go have a session on that. It produces reports so that you can see what's happening. It then links those together to generate a machine file. But it also you can you can also redirect that and replace this linker here with your own linker so that you can take our outputs in terms of the assembler and generate a specific machine code, that, a machine file that you could edit. And there's reasons for doing that editing. Very, very valid. And finally, we go through, we show you in the videos how to take that hex file and put it right inside that chip. So what's important is that it, it's an end-to-end -end solution. It has all the pieces that you need to make a piece of code. And it, you can do this supply chain of start to finish extremely quickly. The technology we used was a very small board. Uh, it looked like this from uh, Chris Roper. It's a very simple, in the heart of it, there's a um, small chip, four LEDs, a switch and a potentiometer and supporting resistors. And with that, we could do an awful lot. What's important is I use Great Car Basic version 98.07, and you will need to download that, and that is session one. This simulates, the board simulates a, a low pin count uh, board, um, and which is available for microchips. So you could use that board if you wanted to. The programs I have generated will, will work on many, many different microcontrollers. Don't get caught up on this 60, on this on this particular chip, okay? Um, if you don't require something called PPS or peripheral pin select, then don't use it. Just delete that piece of the code. Now, you might need to remove some of the LEDs. This particular 8-pin chip is very small, and we use one particular board as an input. And you might have to take some LEDs out at some points, okay? And because, again, we're using an input uh, on, the, um, on, on one particular control line, you might have to actually use high level, um, a particular programming methodology called high-voltage programming. This shouldn't be a constraint. Let's move through. So I used a 16F18313, and it's a, it's a PIC. As I said, it could be any of the range, and it was attached to a... I used a PIC kit 2. I showed you how to do PIC kit 3, Northern Programmer, a whole range of programmers that were connected to put the program into here. 
is connected through five wires and five wire core wires only just to program it and the rest are for LEDs etc etc so what did it look like it looked like a little pin like this little chip and it had eight pins and we did a very we did a tremendous amount of stuff you can learn an awful lot from this little little chip so what were the training themes that you can go through? There were eight major training themes that I chose. There were the on the left, there were the basics. There were the things like the basics, get it installed and make some LEDs flash. And then I did something called pulse width method um, modulation. How would you control a signal in terms of its frequency and its duty? And there's many different ways you can do that. Three different ways we looked into. We did serial communications so that this little board can communicate with other devices, not only out, but in and, uh, and around in a circle. Inside of here, there are a number of timers. So we did this, the fourth major theme was timers. And we looked at how you can generate signals in in, in a particular function called millis right the way through to generating interrupts so that when something happens in terms of time you can do some code i attached an an lcd to this to make it operate and then we took a sensor and that sensor's here it's a small temperature sensor and we put that temperature sensor onto our little board and we put the outputs onto this display and we use those sensor as an example of how the libraries work and the hundreds of many many libraries and many different sensors you could attach to the program we then did something which was quite interesting in terms of data we use the memory that's inside of here that's available to us to store data not program data but reference data you might want to use for fonts for setup data etc and how different chips have different capabilities in terms of that storage in the long-term storage of data we then looked at the um, software itself in terms of what is great car basic as a tool chain and then we looked at how an assembler works and the assembler choices that you've got to help you um, generate a hex file to do some, because you might need to edit that, some, that output for your own use. It's not necessary for the general case. And finally, we did look at programming, how to put the program from your com computer into this chip. But the route that you could, you don't have to follow one to 21. You could literally take session one session 21 because you need to install and test and program something that's a very valid use you might just want to go through the basics and 21 to see how you program it you might need to just to understand what the tool chain is so just do session 19 if you want to know how the assembler works and how you can use assembler options just do 20 and these route the route through the training is very valid eight mega themes 21 sessions and i still don't feel that we covered enough subjects in the 21 i could have carried on what are the resources so i'm giving you this presentation i will give you the source code you've got all the videos the presentations and uh, and a spreadsheet and um there is um, a spreadsheet that's out in um there is a spreadsheet that's out in uh, great in um i'm just going to change my presentation here one moment let me just shuffle that up for you there we go the um there are a couple of uh, as i just said there's a this there's a tool there's a couple of spreadsheets that you need to get hold of so let's just do that now so that you can see how it works so i will put th these links inside of um the uh youtube video but the watch if i select this if i if i just get rid of my point my screen point here and just turn it off okay make it now i can click on here and i'm going to take you through to this presentation this presentation is up on um my uh, onedrive account and here it is you can have a look at it 
And the beauty in this is, is that if you actually view this, uh, you could view it as a presentation or a slideshow. Let's just do a slideshow from the beginning. So if I take that link, let me just show you me take it. I'll go back to the desktop, I think. Let me go to my desktop. There we go, my desktop. If I take this link here, it will take me out to my OneDrive account. Once you've got that OneDrive account up, if it ever comes up, it says it's waiting. Here we come. This is the actual presentation. Just cursor through to the end lot and you're back at these links. Lot. It's the same slide. Let's, let's have a look. If we take this link here, we open the, open the link. Here are all the Here's all the source code. So I can look at training session 12. Here is that source code. If I look at the videos, if I open the link, here are all the videos. If I want to see all the presentations, here are all the presentations. Finally, there is um, the tool chain and a, a calculator, so let's, we can just select that link and open that link and it will take you through to the spreadsheets that you saw inside of the training sessions. And you can filter and, and, and uh, manipulate your heart's content. And finally, the last one that was in there, there's a timer calculator. So if you want to know how to do those, do that um, calculation for timers. It's in here. So it's all there for you. Uh, and I thank um, everybody for, for helping me get this stuff done. Let's go back to our presentation. So here we are. We're back at, back in PowerPoint. And so what we've got is these training themes. Take your own route through. You do not have to go 1 to 21. Pick your subject areas. Give me feedback. Let me know what to change. What other resources did I miss, etc. Where did you make it successful, etc. What is important? What is, let me just is important is that when you see the videos, you're following on YouTube. Why is that important? There are certain constraints with YouTube. And if you don't follow me on YouTube, I don't get to put the links in. All sorts of strange monkey stuff happens with YouTube. Okay. All right. So I just want to say thank you for following the videos. I do hope you enjoy them. Okay. And just give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. Um, what could we add, etc. But great. Well, let's call that a wrap.